what we have in here is the gray area which is the overnight trading and the white area is the pit trading or the regular day trading and all of the news that didn't move markets and talk about moving markets well nothing right look at what happened in here i mean just this range that you see in here as the broad market chopped we were looking for this to be a steeper decline in here and actually getting down to some 2449 was our target and that didn't uh, hit it as these high cap stocks have such powerful bids in there monday uh news came out that north korea fired another icbm and uh, that was russian sanctions uh the news about that all coming out the eurozone unemployment rate at an eight-year low how about the junk bond rate in europe it's at uh just near a record low who could you know 2.4 percent on junk bonds in europe i mean there's something crazy going on when you talk about that boeing uh jumped like crazy on likelihood of big orders uh from uh out of India and uh, the industrials, they surged, the NASDAQ dropped, and you could see the choppy market that we had in here on Monday. Uh, world markets were all stronger on Tuesday. You got this uh, pretty good overnight rally, uh, and uh, the president uh, tweeted and took credit for the record Dow, like he's been around here long enough to do that. Well, truth is, is that investors are looking at his agenda and saying, well, you know, you cut in, you uh, cut uh, taxes in a big way and you stimulate uh, the, the markets, so uh, then it's good news. So they're buying on that. They better get that though or uh, they're going to be quite disappointed they were watching apple which the news was coming out after the close and the uh, apple earnings were really good and uh, that uh, was a quiet day here on tuesday we got those apple news coming out and on when and wednesday morning look at this the market opens higher and cannot hold and you get this really big move to the downside right there uh, as you fall from 2476 all the way down all the way down to uh, 2463 it's a whole 13 point decline in the s p 500 which is nothing and you look at this chart it looks like something but the market is having a hard time getting uh, anything down um, uh, POTUS uh, was aimed at China talked about the unfair trade going on and that's going to heat up some more and more in here uh, and uh, the eurozone talked about their fears of the strong do uh, euro uh, weak dollar which uh, then uh, changed uh, as far as Friday came but look what happened in here you get all this selling in here and as typical you get the buying pushing it back up for the rest of the day as the buyers are not done and yet um, Thursday world markets were really mixed uh, the eurozone was up when the Bank of England held rates that pushed uh, the bond markets up the pound had a big decline after that we were looking for the pound to roll over and that fit nicely into our analysis Russia then comes out and warns about a trade war I'm telling you you're not done hearing about that Tesla goes up after a huge loss uh, they beat estimates uh, uh, which expected even a bigger loss and uh, Elon Musk comes out uh, talks about being depressed uh, and there were been so far 63,000 model three cancellations what do you think about that so uh, their cash burn is huge and uh, Tesla I think uh, I'm going to talk about that later in the show I think it's a sell what do you think of that and uh, ISM fell sharply and that helped the bonds they got that huge pop along with what the Bank of England did and then reversed on Friday US stocks were really quietly lower here's where Mueller comes out and he impanels the grand jury and you got this little down tick of five points for a few minutes and then of course it bounced right back world markets uh, were up uh, uh, with the eurozone uh, up a bit uh, as far as Friday goes the payroll numbers came out strong you could see that up 209,000 uh, and 4.3 percent uh, equals the 16 year low on the unemployment rate wages popped about three tenths of a percent and are up 2.5 percent year over year that is the beginning of some wage inflation potentially that's why the bond market moved down also uh the greenspan was interviewed uh, on uh, cnbc and he's talked about the bonds having their 
irrational exuberance moment. He's very negative, very worried about the bond market in here. And U.S. stocks uh, just simply, uh, are with uh, about an hour and something to go in here in the day, are chopping around uh, in this tight range. You can see that little triangle formation there. Not a whole lot when you look at that. So uh, that's a look uh, at what happened during the week. Uh, lots of news that went nowhere. Interesting, right? And again, the Dow just soaring all week long. Here's our calendar for the week, and man, there's almost nothing on here as we've gotten past the earnings season. Um, the only thing that I have marked off in here is the um, on Friday, the Consumer Price Index. Now, why would I be uh, that interested in the Consumer Price Index as a market mover? Well, it's because if we start seeing some heat, inflation heating up, the bond market's going to really take it on the downside. And honestly, I don't think the stock market could survive big uh, jumps in interest rates in here. So I think that is really an important number uh, to consider. I want to take just a few minutes to talk to you about our new video workshop, The Five Essential Building Blocks to Successful Trading. Well, it isn't exactly new as I've given it a lot of times live, but I wanted to make it easier for people to benefit from our work and put it into a video series. This is not like any workshop that you've ever seen before. We don't, you know, advertise um, that we're going to give you the winning system. You know, uh, that uh, system that gives you the uh, thousand or two thousand or three thousand percent return on the trade. This is much more different. It's about you or really it's about me because what I give in here is an expose of my 42 year history. Talk a lot about the lessons I learned and well, the pain or the, the challenges I suffered along the way to learn the lessons so that you don't really have to do that. You can learn from what I experienced. Um, this, is, uh, this talks about the forces that are within me that really brought volatility in, in, in my history as a trader and that may actually be doing the same thing for you or many other things that may be challenges for you in trading. So in the intro, I give you all that history about me uh, and then I tell you what's coming in the next five videos, which I'm going to do right now briefly, give you a little bit of idea. Here is the uh, five essential building blocks to successful trading. So in, in building block number one, we talk about the underlying causes to the success failure cycle. You know that cycle where you know, you're doing really well and all of a sudden you get into a slump. There's often forces within us that you know, bring poor decision making. Uh, you know, I share mine, what those negative forces are and what has you know, really driven me to you know, a lot of emotional swings throughout, especially the early part of my career. And I help you find that about you, what brings these uh, repeated um, behaviors that bring challenges to you in trading. Building blocks number two is about the reactions that we have, those emotional reactions. They're often really strong. That goes really hand in hand with what we talk about in building block number one. You know, that stress, the disappointment, that negative self-talk, the, the feelings of fear or shame or anger when things start to go wrong. So what we talk about and what we do in here is give some really good processing about how to build emotional fitness. That's really what number two is. Number three is, you know, matching style, method, and personality. And what that means is that, well, you know, we often struggle with style and knowing what, you know, the right vehicle is for us to trade. And then, you know, when we try to figure out what's right, we're not exactly sure how to match up those analytical tools. Also, there's sometimes mismatches in our personality and our experience in the market and our account size and our risk parameters that we designed for ourselves. So this is all about getting balance. Uh, and once you find that balance, actually that really helps with what we talk about in the previous building blocks about the things that trigger those emotional reactions that could really get us into some trouble building block number four is about discipline uh, we look at six areas of discipline it's not only about taking losses properly um, so what we look for is getting in the right mind frame uh, to be really focused 
that helps us really stay on on a plan that we build. Uh, and when we do that, we really can build greater knowledge. So the, the more discipline we have in all areas of our life, and that's what we really talk about is discipline in life and in trading in this section, that really helps us uh, to be a much better trader, much calmer, much more balanced in our life. Building block number five is about designing that plan, that unique plan, the, the basic design, understanding the win-loss ratio that we need to have to be successful, and about you know reasonable expectations of returns, and how having you know unreasonable expectations can really throw off uh, our uh, level of success. And it's about how to create that winning formula, the unique one for you. So, you know, all of this really has got an overlay to it. It's all about uh, keeping ourselves totally balanced and really helping us with um, how our emotions might get in the way of that. Um, so that's really the overlay. It's about this um, being in balance and everything about our um, approach to trading, everything that we learn about trading, uh, the way we um, engage in the markets uh, based on who we are, and about how we can keep ourselves from getting uh, uh, you know, set off by the uh, emotional triggers. Really about being the best trader that you can be. Um, all, all you know, all the things that we're going to cover in here. You, you might hire a coach, or you know, enter, go into some programs and spend thousands and thousands of dollars for the type of things that we're going to talk to you about in this. This is nothing like that. I mean, a couple hundred bucks uh, is is an unbelievable um, amount of money to pay for the incredible uh, amount of knowledge that we're going to share. Every one of these um, videos has got um, a worksheet that comes with it. You'll be able to um, do some homework around integrating uh, the things that we're talking about. There is really uh, an unbelievable amount of information in here to really help you get balanced. I mean, we really wanted to keep it very affordable. And I share with you the experience that I've had in 42 years, uh, as I said earlier. This is about uh, you being the best trader that you can be through the lessons that I've learned uh, in uh, trading in the markets and uh, through uh, integrating um, uh, many other uh, aspects of the lessons uh, that I've had in all this period of time. I think you'll find it amazing, especially for this uh, incredibly low price. Go to the S Slim uh, website, go up to workshops, click on the five essential building blocks to successful trading, and you will see there um, this uh, more of this information, uh, and you'll be able to sign up right there for this reasonable price. I really hope that you take the time uh, to take this great six video series. Thanks very much for listening. All right, short-term view for the coming week as we look at the stock market. Um, we take an accountability of what we thought was gonna happen in the last week, and then uh, we project as to what we think is gonna come in the next week. For our members, we do this on five major markets uh, and look at all the momentum studies and all that, so it's uh, really great if you take up uh, take us up on the special, uh, you'll be able to see those very involved uh, videos on the projections for the coming week for all the markets with all that uh, detail that we look at in there. So what we're going to look at now is this S&P 500 chart on the daily chart. Now what we were looking for in the last week was that the market was going to roll over and move down. Now, the um, amount that we saw the market move to the downside uh, was minimal compared to what we had expected. Our downside projection was for the S&P 500 to move down to 2449 or 2440. That would put it down to approximately this zone right in here that you could see right in here. That was our um, target zone for the week. And as you can see, it hardly even had a downtick this whole week. Now, we're, we're looking at the 
two different size cycles in here. We'll call it the major and the minor in here, so it's pretty easy to understand. Each of these cycles essentially uh, averages about 18 days, 18, 19 days between the important lows. That would be right here and right here. And the smaller one is averaging around 9 or 10 days. As a matter of fact, you could see this one right in here was a 10-day cycle that mm, this low was just a little bit off right there. Now you can see this rally in here is taking us up to day six. So generally when you get into the final stages uh, of the bigger pattern right in here and the smaller pattern turning down, you get a pretty good decline. In strong markets like this, declines have not been very severe, as you could see right in here. Now, we believe that the, the weekly pattern was rolling over and expected to see a big decline. That this period was that one of extreme risk risk, then you get a rally in here, and then another period of extreme risk out this way. So this one hasn't brought anything yet. We still think, though, that in this next, because this is only day six, the next three or four days has a lot of downside risk. So we are calling for a decline in the stock market in the next week. Now, the projections that we're looking at in here are around uh, uh, looking for 24.56 uh, like right over here down to right over here which is 24.48 potentially uh, getting down to this lower level right over here at the 618 at about 24.39 so those are our downside targets in here we're looking for the stock market to have a down week this week and as we said last week the risks are growing and we think think that there's a pretty good decline. Now, whatever we get this week, we think that we'll get a bounce after that as I project out a little bit. And then this period over here in the second half of August is really what we consider to be the riskiest uh, time period. We thought it would be a minor decline this week. Well, it was nothing. It got nowhere. We think that the coming week is where we're going to get some downside action. And then later out uh, in August is where there is a lot of risk in there. So we'll learn some stuff, though, by how much the market uh, can decline in this next week. I hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also go to AskSlim.com and become a Level 1 member. No cost to you, and we have some special videos for you to see. I know you'll enjoy them. Don't you